Hi everyone. Welcome back to another CLS example for PSAT 5A. In example 2.3, we're going to look at reading a CDF. So as you recall, we have two different probability tables and they actually both give us the same information. There's just a different format. So whenever we highlight here, you see that that's less than or equal to, you know this is CDF compared to our usual equal sign here that would represent our PDF. So always be careful reading and looking at the tables here. So for this problem, you're given a PDF and you're asked to find, sorry, you are given a CDF and you're asked to find a probability X being greater than or equal to. So keep in mind, CDFs are cumulative probabilities, that's the C, and they give you values for X and all numbers less than. So if I see greater than, then what I wanna do is I wanna be able to convert this to a less than problem. And what I'll apply is my complement rule that says the probability of an event could be one minus the probability of its complement. So applying that to the current problem here, I can write probability of x greater than two as one minus the opposite. So instead of all the numbers bigger than two, well, I want, well, what's the chance I have all the numbers less than or equal to two? And so the advantage here is this is the CDF value for two. Now you might look and you're looking at the table and say, well, there's no two on there. It doesn't really matter. I just have to satisfy the given condition. So again, recall in CDFs and PDFs, this top row here is gonna give you all the possible values of your random variable. So I have three numbers that are possible listed here. And I have an event, let me highlight this in green, that says I want all X's two or smaller. So I don't necessarily need to have the number two in my table. I just need to satisfy, well, what is this event saying? And the event's just saying, well, give me all the X's that are two or smaller. And if I look at my possible value, there's only one such value here, and that is at negative two. So if I go through and I plug this in, I'm gonna substitute, well, this, is just the individual value here, x equals negative two. And since there are no values smaller than, in this particular problem, I'm gonna note over here that since negative two is the smallest value, in this particular case, the chance that x is less than or equal to negative two is identical to the chance that x equals negative two. So now I can go and substitute in this probability negative two as the 0.115 that's on my CDF table, and then finish off the question and do the subtraction and get the chance that X is bigger than two is 85%. So in the second part here, again, given the CDF, the question is now, well, what is the average value of X? And we've seen several times now that again, the notation for average is mu. And I can do this sum to find the average. The only problem is we're missing the PDF values. So these values here is what I'm writing as the P of little x. So the probability that little x happens. So it's just a matter of how do I read the CDF? Is there a way to convert it to a PDF so that way we can plug it in? And there is, and let's walk through that. So for the first value, we saw earlier that because negative two is the smallest number, the chance that it's equal to negative two is the same as the chance that it's less than equal to negative two. And I have this immediately from the table. And as it turns out, for discrete random variables, the smallest value that we have for X is gonna be the same probability for PDF and CDF. Now, in the next value, 
I want right here is just the probability that X is three. Well, what I have instead is I have, well, X less than or equal three above it. So if I write that part out, let's change colors. I know that the probability that X is less than or equal to three. So I want all X is three or smaller and there are only two of them. There's the chance that X is three itself or the chance that X is less than three. And in this case, only negative two fits that condition. Now, right here is the CDF value that the table provides, which is 0.75. This is the value we're looking for. And then this at X equals negative two is what we found in that first step giving us 0.15. So now I just have a simple fill in the blank missing algebra problem here. So what plus 0.15 is 0.75? That gives me 0.6. Now again, there are a couple of ways I can go about finding the final probability, but I'm just gonna use our standard here where we know that the sum of all of your probabilities total one. So all three of these numbers in this box here must total one. That means my remaining probability here must be 0.25. Okay. So to answer this question here, I'm gonna plug my PDF values now into the formula for mu. And it's the same still, just keep in mind, we do have a negative value. So we wanna make sure we keep track of that. Plus three times 0.6 and finally plus six times 0.25. And let's see, I work all that out and from doing this correctly, it should be three. So that'll be the average value. So the lesson here is to be careful about reading the tables and making sure you're using your tables appropriately. And it just gets tricky if the problem starts with a CDF and you have to convert to a PDF first. All right, hope that helps. I'll see you guys next week.